Skyper, no Skyping. Skyper, no Sky. Hey, viewers, it's the me and team. Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. And I've been hearing some comments along the lines from, say, my good friend MLS that he hasn't seen much cheesing in this run. And you know what? He's right. Aside from fishing like uh, backstab fishing, like it's going out of style, I really haven't broken the game that much. So, in this part, as it turns out, even though I pre-recorded this, we're going to be doing just that. It's time to break the game a little bit. And uh, so to do so, we are going to sequence break a little bit, although this kind of game is kind of built for sequence breaking. But we're not going where we're supposed to go next. Not that I've really upheld that in the first place, for example. Ah, no! No, where are you putting your sword? I don't want it there. Um, I really haven't gone where I'm supposed to, except for the Taurus Demon fight. Other than that, I've been all over the place trying to gather items that make this game a little bit easier for us. Uh, but so far, nothing too crazy, just some soul arrows, you know. I haven't really gone for the game-breaking goodies just yet. So, that's why we're heading into Darkroot. And, are we heading into Darkroot Forest? Well, no. There is a good way to farm there, and I think I'll show it off at least once. Uh, at some point during this playthrough. Um, but farming is a little bit dull and slow. <laughs> I say that, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that um, it, it has to be. But the way you farm in the forest is basically by tricking the NPCs into repeatedly running off the cliff over and over again. And I, I think anybody who shows off ways to cheese the game probably needs to demonstrate that at least once. So I'll get to it, but that's not where we're headed today. Today we're heading into Darkroot Basin. Uh, one of you suggested that I take on Havel in this part, basically like how I fought the the Black Knight or Dark Knight or whatever. Yeah, Black Knight. Um, <laughs> just club him to death with backstab fishing. Um, for those of you who aren't nor used to the game, the amount of time that would take with a standard club and like no stats scaling to speak of since I have base strength. Wow, that would be slow. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go. This is Dark Souls and kick this guy off the cliff. And yeah, that that would take a while. I, I'm estimating somewhere in the neighborhood of five straight minutes of me fishing for backstabs. <laughs> well, at least you guys would get a clear glimpse on how to fish for backstabs. Anyway, to get into the Dark Brute Basin, veer off to the right here, like you're seeing. Be wary of liar. That's good advice. I don't know why they put that there. Maybe someone else suggested to try jumping. And the next guy put a soapstone sign down saying, be wary of liar. Whatever. Dark root basin it is. We're going down. And it's a ways down. Don't fall. You <laughs> will kill you if you fall. And what am I doing here? Ah. Preemptively equipping the light crossbow. It really shouldn't be doing that at this point. But hey, you know. What's a good let's play without some blunders from me? And, you know, this is the first time I've found a Crystal Lizard. I'm pretty sure I forgot to get one in the Undead Berg. Like, I, you know, I missed it on the way up to the Taurus Demon. I'm almost certain there's one there. Um, I, I think it's on that first level as you're going up the stairs. But basically, you run them down, you kill them, you get some chunks for upgrading your weapons and armor. Uh, Twinkling Titanite being a bit more precious than chunks, which you can farm for more consistently. A Twinkling Titanite, I... Oh, you can buy it now. You can buy it, but it's expensive. But, yeah. You, you can get access to any of that stuff later in the game, so it's not that big a deal. Slabs, on the other hand, are a real pain to farm for. And uh, some of them, you just can only get so many per playthrough. So, I think it's possible to get regular Titanite slabs in a regular new game, like as many as you want, although it would take an eternity. Uh, literally. Especially if you want for as many as you want. Ha <laughs> ha! But, um... Some of the others, you really can only get one per new regular, you know, per new game playthrough or new game plus playthrough or whatever. Considering you can go new game plus infinite times, you could eventually stack up as many items as you want. And after new game plus seven, it doesn't even get any harder. So happy days there. You can get as many of those red titanite chunks as you want. You just have to play through the game a bajillion times. But for the others, they can be farmed. I hate farming for chunks. It's much less painful in this game than, say, Demon Souls, where it's freaking terrible. But um, it's still not fun to farm. 
Anyway, I'm going for fast rolls here. And I'm trying to distribute my leather armor such that I can roll quickly. That's going to be important in this area, as we are going to be taking on the Hydra along with all of the Crystal Golem Guardians. And yes, I'm trying to get under one quarter of my equip rate, so uh, bear with me as I'm doing some fast math in-game, so to speak. Well, reasonably so. I think my most impressive demonstration of mathematical prowess... Oh! <laughs> I almost ate a Crystal Golem punch to the face. Anyway, my my best demonstration of that was here's a might and magic when I'm calculating you know if I could one shot stuff. You're doing a little bit of multiplication in my head. You know it's uh, a little bit better than times four. Anyway, how did I dodge that guy while I was in the menu? Well, I have a Turtle Beach headset or some such that I got for Xbox. Oh, a little over a half a year ago now, and yes, I actually heard the footsteps, and I'm like, oh crap, I'm not moving. So, dealing with the Hydra, hmm, <clears throat> yes, how to do that? Well, you want to fight him, but these golems are going to be a problem, so I've seen this strategy executed by uh, Dark Souls Let's Player Vegeta, yes, yes, after Dragon Ball Z Vegeta, and he does occasionally use clips from the anime, but he's uh, quite good at this game. I would recommend checking him out if you want to see some actual skill. <laughs> anyway, um, you basically run around like an idiot, get the Hydra to fire at you, and have the water blasts hit the golems. It's much faster when you're ro rocking an unupgraded club, or really anything that's unupgraded, to let the Hydra do the work for you, so... Here I go running around like an ass, trying to get the Hydra to hit the golems and not me, and not get hit by the golems. But we're working on it, and actually we're down to one golem, so I'm not doing too bad with this. This actually is not the hard part. All you really have to do is keep moving, and if you're at this distance, the Hydra's not going to hit you. It's when you get closer to him that it's a little bit more challenging to avoid him hitting you. But the whole point, and this fight seems like it's impossible if you're playing it the first time, you're like, he's just going to keep shooting at me. But he will stop shooting at you and do other things when you get close, so that's the trick. You need to get close. And I try to zigzag in here. You have to be careful, though. You don't want to... Yeah, I see. I picked a bad time to cut back, and now I'm in trouble. Because now I'm pinned at the worst range where he basically shotgun blasts at me. And I'm not close enough to get him to stop, but I'm not far enough away that I can dodge consistently. And this is a problem. And I basically get one-shotted by him because I get hit by two of his water blasts. Lovely. So, we're going to do a mulligan. Now, <laughs> deaths like that and the death to the three undead soldiers in the previous game, uh, previous part, those are not nearly as humiliating as, say, <laughs> the death in part two where I got killed by that regular undead soldier. That was really bad. That's face palm. However, all these deaths are avoidable, actually. Like, if I were to put up a uh, unfair death counter or a cheap uh, fake difficulty death counter, it would still be at zero right now because I have not died in a way that I did not deserve to die yet. Uh, Undead Dragon spanked me for taking his stuff too early in the game and I wasn't fast enough to get away. Well, <laughs> that's pretty clearly my fault. And man, this takes forever with a bad weapon. Especially with a bad blunt weapon, because they're not weak to it. Um, that death to that undead soldier, as pathetic as it was, it's not like I can claim the game screwed me over or something. Nope. I had to try and be cool sauce and go for the parry, which got me killed. Uh, going for the three guys at once. Again, hubris. I'm like, I can backstab fish these guys. I got this. Dead. And then the Hydra thing. Well, you're probably not supposed to naked run the Hydra at low levels. Uh, that's probably not what the game intended you to do. Uh, plus, I made a bad decision there. If I had kept running the way I was initially running and not doubled back into the shot directly, I would probably have been able to close the distance on that attempt. So, I screwed up, and I paid for it. That's fair game design. I, I have no complaints about that. Other than that, it sucks to look like an ass, but yeah, that's part of the fun, too. Anyways... We are back down here, and we're going to have to do the runaround with the golems again, because they respawn, as do I. So we're going to... It's a trade. It's a trade. It's it's better that I respawn and they respawn than me not being able to respawn after dying. An Iron Man run on Dark Souls. I could do it. 
But I, I actually think an Iron Man run would be boring. Because you're, um... <laughs> you, you would just play more cautiously. And that's boring. Who wants to see someone play ultra cautiously all the time? No. You want to see failure. Of course, uh, most successful speed... Well, all successful speed runs are essentially Iron Man challenges. Because dying uses up too much time. In fact, they don't even die on Seek to Scaleless later, which is supposed to be a mandatory death. I'll try and show off that shortcut. I'm not exactly pro-god mode at it, but, you know, well, well, I'll see what I can do. And here I eat another water blast. Lovely. I'm really, uh, making this cheesing run look like the game is trivial, aren't I? But I have been misplaying, and if you follow these guidelines, you can do it too. It might take a few tries if you've not played the game before. In fact, this part... I'm not sure I would recommend it if you haven't played the game before. Just summon help or, I don't know, or um, save up 20,000 souls and buy that Crest of Artorius and farm, basically, uh, like I'll show later in the game. That's probably the easier way to play. What I'm doing right now is pretty abusive, but at the same time not easy to execute. Now, once I get the rewards for doing this, well, then I will just be abusive in the regular sense. But that's only once I've actually succeeded in killing the Hydra, which... Yeah. See, he's overshooting me there. No, no, get the, get the bloodstain! Ah, no, I, I want to not die. And apparently, I manage. Because here I am. And yes, once you are close enough, he switches into... Well, for lack of a better word, melee mode, I guess. And he puts his head into this one. His back, his neck. Whatever. Anyway, hmm. Yeah, light crossbow, plus zero. If I were you, I would use the couple Titanite shards you have at this point in the game and upgrade this sucker because this, this is going to take a while. Remember in my Final Fantasy Tactics Let's Play, which I will finish, when I was just yelling a lot with Ash and Booty early in the game? Well, yeah, this is going to be kind of like that. So, I don't think I'm going to show this whole thing. <laughs> Because this is going to get a little slow and dull. And I, I don't know how many times you would want to want to see me beating on the Hydra with uh, weak soul arrows. And then crossbow bolts. But it, it's not like the fight gets more difficult or changes in any capacity, no. Now that I was able to get the Hydra to kill the golems, I can literally just stand here, block his attacks, which you can do with a shield like this, and wail on him. Yep. Super exciting play right here. So, I don't know. I, there's not a whole lot else to say about the Hydra. It's, um, it, it's not a, it's not a complex mini-boss fight. Getting in close to him can be a little bit challenging. But that's really all there is to it. Once you're in close, you, you take your pick how you want to attack him. If I wanted it to and I had a good melee weapon, I could pull that out and just swat at the heads as we go. Uh, you can obviously use any bow, you don't have to use a crossbow. Regular bow is effective, although at no upgrades at all and no stat scaling, crossbows are going to be dealing more damage, so it'll probably be a better bet. Or, uh, you can cast spells, really, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is hit the head, so, and yes, you got to see there, as you do damage to him, you will be able to cut off some heads, which only makes the fight easier because he's less likely to even hit you and force a block than otherwise. See, even now, I'm already... I wanted to see if I can hit that cutoff head, but I can't. I'm already not being hit sometimes as he does his attacks. And yeah, here I realize, okay, I'm going to have to unlock to attack him with my soul arrows because now the head that was immediately in front of me that I was hitting with the soul arrows is gone. And... You know, I've played a decent amount of multiplayer, and on multiplayer, when you're fighting other people, you really do kind of have to manual aim, especially if you use pyromancy, which I adore using, like if you're throwing fireballs. If you lock on someone and throw a fireball at them, they're just going to roll through it and backstab you, or roll out of the way, or take any other number of evasive actions that's uber simple and stupid. But if you unlock and predict where they're going, well, that's dangerous for them. And if they eat a great fireball with, uh, like, all the boosts for magic casting and, like, maxed out pyromancy glove, that's going to hit for, like, a thousand damage. That would one-shot this character. Um, probably even close to the end of this playthrough, it would still one-shot this character. Like, most people have in the 1,500 to 2,000 hit point range. 
So if you stun them with a great fireball and then hit them with like a great combustion or something, they're either dead, a lot of them are dead, or almost dead. That is ridiculous. And you know, of course, this is my personal favorite, which is hitting gankers with fire tempests. Man, that'll be fun to show off. I, I'm going to have to at least commit one video to that after this playthrough. Because <laughs> there's some fun to be had in player versus player. And maybe I'll show off some co-op too, just to show how that works. Because honestly, as cheesy as this run is going to get as the game goes on, nothing beats just summoning somebody who is significantly stronger than you and knows what they're doing into the game and basically watching them own the crap out of everything for you. And the nice thing about Dark Souls uh, co-op is that the game is designed to reward them for doing that. So they have good incentive to do that. You can get a lot of souls for helping people. Um, it's pretty close to farming properly, in my opinion. And, well, maybe not in, like, New Game Pluses. But you get a lot of souls for it, and it's so much less dull than just grinding souls over and over again by killing the same enemies repeatedly. And yes, here we are out of soul arrows. So, time to switch back to the crossbow. No, I actually should switch to the crossbow. And yeah, the thing didn't even hit me while I was doing that. I just stood in one place, switching weapons. <laughs> you know what, viewers? I'm going to stop with the commentary here and go super fast mode because we've been sitting at the Hydra long enough already. And this part is going to take a while, so I will be right back. Okay, and we are back, and as you can see, I ran out of bolts, but fortunately I still had the 16 standard bolts that come with the crossbow when you pick it up in the Undead Burg, and so I load those suckers on, and even towards the end of this I was trying to conserve my ammo and do a little bit more damage per shot, but I realized I was close enough. And no, I didn't plan this out perfectly, so apparently that's on the lower end of what you need to kill him. Be mindful of that. If you want to take him out with only arrows, geez, I, I would recommend if you're going with a regular light crossbow only, I would recommend something in the order of like, you know, 300 wooden bolts or whatever, which is only 3,000 souls. It's not that many souls, so you can get away with that. Now, why did I kill the Hydra? And why did I go out of my way to kill the Hydra early? Well, that's where the cheesing comes in. I mean, aside from the fact that I <laughs> just completely destroyed that boss with basic equipment and really not much threat once I close the distance, um, it's what he allows us to get. And um, what he allows us to get is a couple things. But first, now that we've killed the Hydra, we have to uh, take out yet another enemy. And I might actually have to restart here. Sometimes it doesn't spawn right away. And that is indeed the case. Um, there should be a gold golem here, and there isn't. And in situations like this, or when you kill somebody and you're looking for their equipment drops or whatever, well, you uh, just quit out and join back into the game and you're good. You're good to go. You're good to go. Bandai Namco from Software. It, it took me a while to realize, like, From Software was a thing, you know? Like, I thought it was, like, From Software, colon, Havoc, or something, <laughs> like, or whatever it was in Demon Souls. I mean, what do you mean, From Software? Well, apparently, From Software is the name of the company. So there you go. Dogfish beer is good, by the way. Maybe not the best out there, but I like it. It was recommended to me. Anyhow, now that I have rejoined, uh, the Golem is here, and it instantly aggroes. That's nice. And uh, this is probably a bit more, I don't know, maybe it's not more challenging than the Hydra. It's pretty comparable. But this is the harder stretch of the cheesing run, in my opinion. 
I probably won't see anything this difficult again until pretty far into the game because of what I'm going to get here. I uh, might not really see a fight as, as dangerous as what I'm currently in, uh, or the Hydra fight. Anyway, this guy has a couple basic you know, SWAT punching at you attacks and then that crystal attack. The crystal attack's pretty easy to dodge, just roll to the side. It doesn't even have as much width as the regular crystal golems, so you don't have to worry about that. But this is not going to be a fast fight either, because um, you know, he really hurts you if he hits you. And uh, he's yet another enemy that could probably two-shot me. Uh, he can't really one-shot me, although I haven't tried diving into his crystal attack. You know, maybe that could. But uh, otherwise, I don't think he can one-shot. But he can hit the shield pretty hard, and I don't... There is a ring in this game that lets you move at full speed through water. I didn't feel like getting it. I didn't think it was necessary to a cheesing run. Plus, I, th I don't know if you have to beat that boss to get it. There's a there's a boss in the area where you get it. Now I'm forgetting whether you need to kill him or not. Because any time I go back there, I always just kill him. Basically, you have to go back to the Undead Asylum that you start the game. And there's a much more difficult version of the starting boss, like the tutorial boss there. Who has like huge area of effect magic attacks. He hits much harder. He's on the upper end in the game in terms of total hit points. And he's not actually harder than a lot of the ender game bosses, or even like the mid game bosses, but he has a lot of hit points. And if you don't know what you're doing, that was magical attacks will kill you pretty easily. Anyway, you can roll out of the way of the crystals, or if you're already off to the side, just keep strafing. Even without the fast movement in the water, it's not that hard to dodge this guy, because he doesn't have a lot of variety in his attacks. He's not particularly fast, which is a plus and uh, you can just block him. So those things together are pretty useful. Don't block the crystal attack because I think it has a magical component to it or just the fact that it's spiking you out of the floor. I, I forget, you know, <laughs> they haven't hit me in so long. <laughs> but uh, you, you can't block them completely, I'll put it that way. At least as far as I'm aware. Every time I've tried, I just took damage. And then I learned, hey, if you just roll to the side, you're good. So... That's what I'm recommending to you. I don't care if you're going fat roll, you can roll to the side. It's not that hard. You'll still get out of the way. Because he winds up. Yeah, any enemy that really winds up and telegraphs their attack is going to be much easier to deal with than enemies who are very fast or they have unpredictable attacks or they have random attacks that really don't telegraph themselves. Um, for example, that one boss in Super Meat Boy in the Hell levels. Yeah. I actually have never played that, but I saw... Um, actually, I heard that from multiple sources. <laughs> My friend Lance was talking about it, I think. Uh, it was like a, a pseudo-fake difficulty boss. No, it's not fake difficulty. It's trial and error gameplay. That's the appropriate trope. Know your trope. It's trial and error gameplay. Because the boss has the same set pattern, and you have to memorize it because he doesn't really telegraph his attacks appropriately. So there's no time to dodge, you know, it's uh, not a very skill-based fight. So that's how that is. That's not true for most enemies in Dark Souls. I think it's technically possible if someone had enough skill out there and they were careful. I don't know who has that combination of traits. But uh, I, I think it's possible to get through this game without dying. I really do. Now, do I think that would happen for almost anybody? No. No, because it's pretty human to make mistakes, and this game really ruthlessly punishes mistakes. But there's really no trial and error gameplay, like, even in areas like Sen's Fortress, or I guess the closest thing might be uh, that Crystal Cavern. We'll get there. I'll showcase the Crystal Cavern. Well, I have to. They, they removed the killing glitch, and I wasn't going to use it anyway. So, okay, we are finally through with fighting that same enemy for that period of time. I probably could have sped so, that up too, but eh, thou whatever. Rescueth me. Most gracious, I am deeply obliged. I am Dusk of Ulysseo. I cometh from an age long before thine. I cannot stay here for long. So, before I disappear, allow me to ask one thing. My home, Ulysseo, is the home of ancient sorceries. My hope is to pass this profound knowledge to thee with thine approval. Would this be of assistance to thee? 
Now this is one proposal from a lady you just can't refuse. I am pleased beyond words. Then I shout, engrave my signature. If thou art in need, pray summon me from my signature. Seems that my time is done. May the great flames guide thee. Now in terms of character development, I mean I'm okay with Dusk. I don't like dislike her or anything, but she doesn't stand out as a special character to me. However, she carries some of the most trollish things you can buy in the game. So from that standpoint, I love Dusk. I love Dusk a lot. She also carries some very useful things, which we will be making uh, full abuse of shortly here. We have to get back to where you can summon her first. But yes, Dusk of Olyseal is the reason I came down here. She sells a couple things that are really useful to us. And since I'm almost there, I'm just going to wait until I get there. But basically, if you're coming down here and fighting the Hydra early, you're doing it for Dusk. Or, more specifically, for Dusk's help for you. <laughs> what do you mean, noble causes? Get teabagged. Okay. Bring it on, Dusk. What have I'm you to Dusk sell me? It is an honor I can use your hat. Your hat looks like it would be nice to wear. Learn gesture. Proper bow. It's okay, but it's not the best trolling gesture. Anyway... First thing you get, Ulaseal Ivory Catalyst. This is a crucial item to this run. If you want to abuse spellcasting in not pyromancy or the other things, it's kind of like the Thralin Talisman equivalent. For a very long time. Now oh, I'm talking to her. Okay, fine. Crystal Golem. From my home I was taken. And banished to a plane of distortion. It was there that thou came to my rescue. Long after I had relinquished all hope, Hi, so gleeful was I. My faith reneweth. I renewed her faith. The sorceries of Ulysseal differ from the magic of thine age. It is difficult to explain. Ulysseal's sorceries are, what doth one say? <laughs> They're somewhat of an approximation. Thine sorceries are more straightforward, negating all but thyself. Does thou not find some fascinating? Wait, where are you? All right, lady, I gotta run. But yeah, like I was saying, the Ulysseal Ivory Catalyst. Oh man! Unless you're like Intelligence 27 or something ridiculous like that. Unless your stats are that high, it beats out all of your intelligence scaling. It's yet another one of those items that does. It, it scales poorly, but its base magic adjustment is very high. Um, you're gonna see when I when I equipped it or whatever, that the magic adjust goes way up. And you'll see the results in the damage that my regular spells do as well. You know, like, my spells didn't seem all that special compared to regular attacks. They were a little bit stronger, but not much. Now that I have that, it, it's going to be a big difference. But there's yet another item that you can get here that really makes Dusk all that much better to get early in the game. And that is her set. Now, am I going to run around in a skirt? Well... You can man cannon with that, right? No, but um, her crown lets you take more damage from magic, but also your magic does more damage. I think by 20%. So on top of a, a good base magic adjust catalyst that you can buy, and I'm, I'm not sure when I equip that, but it should be soon, you also get something that boosts your magic damage further. And yeah, here I'm playing around with uh, equipment weight again. I want to try and be able to fast roll. And turns out I can with the waist cloth on, the hollow soldier waist cloth. So we're still wearing that thing. And it actually doesn't look as atrocious now that I'm not wearing only hollow equipment. Anyway, homeward bone back to the bonfire. And that should take care of this part, viewers. I will see you next time. The Mean Team signing off.